It's time for Auntie Lisa's life lesson. Welcome, my niece. Welcome, my nephew. It's so good to be with you today. I have decided that Auntie Lisa's life lessons are going to come in probably in the weekends. I'm doing some work now, and I've got a lot of stuff to do during the week. So the weekends is when you and I are going to get together and kind of have our warm little chats and hang out together. Um, so that's when that's going to happen. That's when you'd hang out with your favorite auntie anyway, isn't it? So that's when Auntie Lisa's life lessons are going to happen. You will see them um, uploaded and hear them uploaded probably on Saturdays and Sundays, Saturdays or Sundays. So be aware that's when Auntie Lisa's life lessons are going to happen for you, okay? A little bit of housekeeping from last episode. We talked about catfishing and how... Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of these thirsty guys kind of trying to sneak into my Facebooks and be friends with me. No friends in common, no um, commonalities in in interests. It was obvious that they were trying to do the, the romance scams kind of things. And I got a response from one of the listeners slash viewers and I wanted to share that with you if I could today. So here it is. Regarding today's catfish talk, I have a son who fell for one of those scams and it's not just gals. Guys fall for these all the time too and I want to talk about that in a minute but let me get back to the letter. Um, but it was from a woman in another country who needed help etc. He sent all of his savings by wiring the money through Western Union. He was younger but still an adult. Lordy, I really thought he had more sense than that. He was still living at home with his dad and me. Once we found out, we tried to help, but there really wasn't any recourse. It was bye-bye money. Hard lesson learned, hard life lesson. Um, Let's see here. I truly hope everyone, men and women alike, heed your advice. And that's, that's, the, that's the truth of it. Once the money is gone, it's gone. There's no getting it back. And this happens to guys as well as gals. And I, I focused on the men that do it last week. And that was woefully inadequate of me because guys get these catfish friend requests all the time. My husband gets them all the time time my son has started to getting to get them and what scares me about that is my son is i don't know if i've told you about this yet we will learn more about this you and i together my son is autistic he's um on the autism spectrum he's high functioning but he's very naive he's 17 years old he has his own facebook we monitor it very closely because we know his emotional maturity is much younger than his age maturity. And he's only 17, so his age maturity is not that good anyway. And he's starting to get these friend requests from these girls that, you know, they're always very bosomy. And they're always beautiful and bosomy and sexy it's it's sex on a stick y'all and they are just dangling it out there saying look at me look at me don't you want to get with this and guys and gals too are visual creatures and say oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. I want to get with that I want to get with that oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. look at that huh unfortunately a lot of times it ain't the truth and we get taken and our money gets taken and then our hearts get broken and then we don't trust again which is I think the saddest part about about it of all is that we think all men or all women are bad because of this and that's where it hurts the most so please niece and nephew be careful if somebody 
who has no friends in common with you or only has one or two friends in common with you and you know those one or two friends might be a little bit gullible be cautious and like i said last week if they start asking for money and start giving you a woe story and you never met them in person really 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 use some some common sense talk to somebody else talk to mom talk to dad talk to auntie lisa um talk to your best friend especially if your best friend is wiser than you might be feel it out if something doesn't feel right it probably isn't right um i know we all want to be loved and we all want to help somebody we all want to be that knight in shining armor even you know i have a need to be needed y'all that's one of my downfalls in life i have a need to be needed so if somebody says they need me i usually go above and beyond to make sure i can help them um but that's how people get taken advantage of please be careful especially in social media and in Facebook. So now we're going to go into a different subject today. We spent enough time on a past subject. Let's go into a new subject, kind of a romance subject. I don't want this always to be about romance. We will talk about other topics, but I've got to thinking. We're thinking about bad romances. And that brings us into my Lady Gaga. La, la, Gaga. Um, a bad romance. Let's talk about bad first dates. Had a bad first date? <laughs> oh, have I had some that bad first dates, y'all? Let me tell you about some bad first dates. Hold on. I must have some Nectar of the Gods first. Diet Coke. Not sponsored FTC. Oh, how I wish, how I wish. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Oh, God, I love my Diet Coke. It is the nectar of the gods, y'all. All right. Bad first dates. <laughs> and I would love to hear from y'all on this. You can always go to my Facebook page, which is Auntie Lisa's Life Lessons. Please tell me about your bad first dates. Email me, Auntie Lisa's Life Lessons at gmail.com. Um, Okay, so here's here's one of my favorite bad first date stories, and I'm I've been waiting to tell you this all week. Uh, this is when I lived in Bryan College Station, Texas, and I had a rule that I broke frequently. By the way, you don't date listeners when you're in radio, because more often than not, listeners are just they they expect you to be the person that you are on the radio and that's not always the person that you are so that's why i never date the listeners but this one guy my god he called all the time every single night i worked midnight to six when i worked in bryant college station texas y'all every single night called 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 please you gotta let me meet you gotta you gotta let me take you out no 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 this went on for weeks y'all weeks Finally, I broke down. I was like, oh my God, this man is not going to leave me alone. Fine. I agreed to go out to dinner with him one night. And we agreed to meet at a local place. And. <laughs> okay, so we meet and we go into the bar of the restaurant and we have drinks and do the get to know you thing. You know, I'm Lisa. I'm. We'll call him John. I'm John. Yada, yada, blah, blah. He goes, hey, after dinner, when we're done here, do you want to go back to the hotel with me to meet my brother? He's in town. Now, I had never met this guy before. I mean, yes, we had talked on the phone. He was a listener. He called all the time. But that doesn't mean that I know you. No, I don't feel comfortable with that let's just have dinner and get to know each other and we'll go from there well he was not happy with that answer but fine we went to 
dinner and we're having dinner. Now, I am a klutz, y'all. I am a total <laughs> klutz. <laughs> my best friend Todd will tell you that I can fall down just by standing up. Uh, my husband will tell you that I can, I can open a car door and while opening the door, shut my finger in it. I am a klutz. So we're sitting there at dinner and I order in the South an unsweet tea because I do not like sugar in my tea. I know right in the South that's a sin, but that's just how I am. So I order an unsweet tea. And while we're talking, I talk with my hands. Have y'all noticed that if you've watched on YouTube, I talk with my hands? Well, while talking with my hands, I accidentally, and I didn't mean to, I accidentally bumped my unsweet tea. It did not knock over, mind you, but I bumped it, okay? So I bumped my unsweet tea. And he goes, you better watch it. You knock that over, I'm going to be mad. Excuse me? Number one, you don't know me. Number two, you don't tell me you're going to be mad at me for the way I talk with my hands. Okay. So that's that's strike number two, right? Number one, asking me to a hotel. You don't know me. Number two, telling me I better watch it. <laughs> so the date continues to progress. And he's really hung up on this hotel thing that I have to go back to the hotel with him at, at the end of the dinner to meet his brother. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not comfortable going back to the hotel. Yes, we've talked, but I'm not comfortable with that. Let's just have dinner and see how this goes. And he's getting more and more agitated about this by the minute. And I'm like, what is this guy's deal but I'm not I'm not getting mad I'm just getting concerned and I'm one of these I laugh everything off <laughs> I'm happy when I get nervous I laugh so I'm laughing things off you know being my normal jovial <laughs> in Bryan College Station Texas at this point I had my coworkers as friends, but I didn't really have a network like family and stuff there. I just, just my coworkers. And this was before the days of cell phones or anything like that. So there was nobody that I could really quick text and say, uh, come show up here and rescue me from this complete Yahoo, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm like, what the blazing? Crap. I'm glad I brought my own car, you know, never, I never go on first dates unless I'm on my own car. It's just how I am. So anyway, the date is not going well, y'all. <laughs> go back to the hotel, please. No. I bump, bump my unsweet tea and he says, you better not knock that over. I'm going to be, screw you. And I'm nervous. Food comes out. He's still harping on going back to this hotel. I'm talking with my hands because I talk with my hands. <laughs> and I talk with my hands and I'm telling a story and I hit the iced tea glass and it goes over and it lands mainly on the table but some of it did go in his lap. He saw, he, his face turned bright red and you could tell he was holding in temper. And when I saw that, I immediately knew I was dodging a bullet. The waiter walked by and <laughs> I had made eye contact with the waiter earlier anyway. The waiter walked by and he goes, well, I guess the drinks are on him. And the guy lost it. And I'm like, and this is my cue to end the date right here. And I asked the waiter for my half of the check. I paid my half. I was not letting this dude pay for anything of mine. And he goes, wait, you can't leave. This is our date. I'm like, no, <laughs> this has not been a date. This has been an 
interesting evening, but not a date. And I thank you very much. I paid my check and I got the hell out of there. So first dates <laughs> are, are, are an interesting situation. And I still tell that story to this day because the waiter, the waiter was just the, the comic relief. I guess the drinks are on him. I loved that waiter. I tipped him so well that night. <laughs> but it brings to mind in this day and age, I sound, I sound old, so old. In my day, we didn't have the cell phones. We didn't have these little tricks. But th this is true. I mean, th back then, this was, I'm not telling you how many years ago this was. <laughs> Forget that. But back then, I didn't have a cell phone in which to call or text my best friend and say, hey, I need you to call me and say there's an emergency at the radio station and I need to get up there to do something, you know, get me out of this bad day. I didn't have that opportunity, but you do in today's climate. We, we have that opportunity. We have the opportunity to have a wingman standing by that you can text a real quick code, you know, say, say, you know, code 48 means get me the heck out of here. Code 22 means this is going really great. If I don't come home tonight, <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, you know, things like that. But in today's age, always, number one, let somebody know where you're at. <laughs> where you're going for dinner, what you're going to be doing, and if you can, who you're going with. If it's a blind date, sometimes that's difficult, but you know what I mean. Number two, have a backup plan. Have somebody on <laughs> that you can text. You know, excuse yourself, I have to go to the ladies' room or I have to go to the bathroom for a second if you're a guy. I'll be right back. Text your friend. Dude, call me. This woman is nuts. Because, guys, you know you get stuck with the psychos sometimes, just like we girls get stuck with the guys sometimes. So this is not left just to, to as a girl thing. This is a guy thing, too. Have somebody you can text to get you out of the date if it's bad. <laughs> and then thirdly, keep a sense of humor about it because that's the only way you're going to get through a bad first date is to keep a sense of humor about it. And I've been on so many first dates. That just sounds horrible to say, but it's true. You can't go on, you, you can't figure out who you want to be with and what you want out of your romantic life unless you go on those first dates. And whether the first date is coffee, whether the first date is a safe lunch, whether the first date is hanging out with a bunch of co-workers, a first date is a first date. And if it's going poorly, get the heck out now. Now, there have been times when the first date has gone terribly, terribly, terribly wrong, but there was still something there, and you're like, maybe I should give a second date a chance. We might talk about that at another time, but I can see that our time is starting to run out for today, but first dates, always have a backup plan, have somebody you can contact, and keep a sense of humor about it. I'd love to hear your first date stories. I'd love to tell your story on a podcast. So remember, you can always email me, Auntie Lisa's Life Lessons at gmail.com. Visit me on Facebook, and uh, that's also Auntie Lisa's Life Lessons. And Auntie, by the way, is spelled A-U-N-T-I-E. Good way to find it. I am your Auntie Lisa. Remember, I love you unconditionally. And our mantra, as always, be bold. Be brave, especially when you're going on a first date, and be unstoppable. I'll see you next week.